On this edition of the Left Bench TV, we'll show you how Maryland field hockey celebrated their historic senior day. Also, a preview of the new look Maryland wrestling team. And one Maryland team made program history. The Left Bench TV starts now. A Big Ten championship, a first ever Big Ten tournament appearance, and two basketball teams that have College Park buzzing. I'm Zach Solom. And I'm Katie Marr. Welcome to this edition of the Left Bench TV, your sideline source for all things Maryland sports. The Maryland field hockey team has been a force to be reckoned with all season, and Friday's game was no different. After two games on the road against Michigan and Ohio State, they came back to College Park to host Michigan State and clinched their fifth Big Ten regular season title. With an assist from sophomore B.B. Donrat, senior Madison McGuire got the Terps on the board only six minutes into the game. And next up, recent Big Ten Freshman of the Week, Emma DeBurdine, shot one in off of a rebound. Starting off the second half, Maeve Kloon advanced the Terps even further. The Spartans managed to get one in, but Madison McGuire answered back with two more goals, sealing the deal with a hat trick. Terps on top, 5-1. to one. Up next, the squad will travel to D.C. to face American, and from there it's the Big Ten Championships, where they'll try their hand at their third tournament title. But the end of the regular season means one thing for every collegiate team, a chance to honor your seniors. TLB TV's Cam Doney was there Friday for the Senior Day celebration. For the field hockey Terps, Senior Days are a time for reflecting, remembering, and recognizing the graduating players. It, went, it came by too soon. Too soon. But <laughs> Four years by, yeah. by. It really flies by. But. Including seniors Kelly LePage and Madison McGuire, who have played alongside each other throughout their college careers. We, we play with each other so long that we know what's going to happen. Where Kelly's going to bring the ball, where I'm going to bring the ball. The opening ceremony also honored seniors Jen Bleakley, Lizzie Desoy, and Logan Edmondson. Um, we've just been like super pumped all day. Like Senior Day is a nice day to get recognized, and like rather than being sad, we're like extremely happy and grateful for like our entire team and just like the entire day. And while McGuire says they spent a majority of their time looking back. I think all day, we, or all week, we've been just like reminiscing on like freshman year and stuff yeah. like that, so it's kind of funny. <laughs> she also believes it's important to keep looking forward. I mean, I think it's just like, it's just another game. Like, yes, it is senior day and it is our last regular time here on like this turf, but we just got to play field hockey, we got to play Maryland hockey, and we got to show Michigan State how we play, the Big Ten how we play, and we capitalized on that. And that's just what they did. Not only did the Terps finish the game with a 5-1 Maryland victory, but with the win, the Terps successfully secured the Big Ten regular season title, making this senior day even more special for the graduating Terps. In College Park, for the Left Bench TV, I'm Cameron Doney. And this class has made their mark on the field hockey program, making it to two national championship games, winning three Big Ten regular season titles and a Big Ten tournament title to cap it off. They will look to add to their accolades heading into postseason play. One team that has not found much success in Big Ten play this year is the Maryland football team. After a 52-10 loss at undefeated Minnesota on Saturday, the Terps have now lost three straight, four of their last five, and hold a one and four conference record. While the team has battled injuries and other issues this season, the explosive offense that we saw in the first few weeks seems to have completely vanished. With just four games left, two of those against ranked opponents, the Terps will need some upset wins if they want to become bowl eligible for the first time since 2016. The team will look to right the ship this weekend against number 14 Michigan. For this special homecoming game, the Terps will be sporting throwback jerseys and the classic script Terps logo on their helmets. While there's certainly a lot of buzz at Capital One for homecoming week, but things at Ludwig Field are heating up too, because women's soccer has a lot to be excited about right now. The team made program history last Thursday after shutting out Michigan State 1-0 and securing their first ever spot in the Big Ten Tournament. 
TLB TV's James Mahoney has more on how the Terps got there. So Maryland women's soccer, they ended their 2018 campaign with a 1-0 loss here at Ludwig Field to Indiana. And after the game, I had the chance to talk with Coach Ray Leon. He explained uh, a story from one of his friends in coaching who said there's four steps to rebuilding a program. You start off by losing a lot, then you lose a little, then you win by a little, and then you win by a lot. Well, last season, the Terps, they lost by a little a lot of times, a lot of one nothing games, a lot of overtime games. But this year, they turned it around and they started winning. And now they made their first ever Big Ten tournament. This was a huge year for the Maryland women's soccer program, coming off of 2018 that saw the Terps pick up the most points in conference play in the Ray Leone era. After being picked to finish second to last in the Big Ten in preseason polls, the Terps responded, finishing with a 5-5-1 record in conference play. And this Maryland team had plenty of marquee wins, including their first win at a ranked opponent since 2014, beating number 20 Rutgers. They scored six goals versus Illinois, their most ever in Big Ten play, and a come-from-behind 2-1 to -one win versus Purdue, their only come-from-behind win of the season. Maryland will be the sixth seed in the tournament and face a Michigan team who scored the most goals of any team in Big Ten play this season. And so for the Big Ten tournament, the higher-seeded team will host the first round. So the Terps will go back to Ann Arbor where they lost this past Sunday. But if they can win there, they'll go to Rutgers, who's hosting the semifinals and finals of the tournament. For the Left Bench TV, I'm James Mahoney. Thanks, James. Maryland finishes the season 9-7-3, and seven and three, their most win since 2013. Their five Big Ten wins are also the most in program history. As the regular season winds down for women's soccer, the men's squad still has a few games left in their 2019 campaign. The Terps are finding their stride, riding a three-match winning streak into the final week of the regular season. Last Monday, they defeated the Yale Bulldogs in overtime at home in their first ever meeting, and then went on the road and took down Ohio State 2-0 in Columbus last Friday. The goals were scored in that game by Justin Geelan and Malcolm Johnston. The Terps have battled through injuries all season, but these young guys have been stepping up big time. Sasha Sarovsky's squad will travel to Penn State for a matchup with the Nittany Lions on Tuesday and finish the regular season at home against Michigan on Sunday, November 3rd. The Terps will also hold home field advantage at the beginning of the postseason as Ludwig Field hosts the Big Ten Tournament. The Maryland volleyball team has had a bit of a rocky season. Their overall record stands at 12 and 10, but they've had some trouble in Big Ten play this past month, with their conference record standing at 4 and 6. The team is finding no luck against ranked opponents so far, and that was shown at home in College Park on Saturday when the Penn State and Nittany Lions came to visit. Saturday's match marked the seventh highest attended game in program history, with over 3,100 fans in attendance at the Xfinity Center main floor. Junior Erica Pritchard and redshirt sophomore Katie Myers led the team with nine kills each, and freshman Rebecca Raff racked up five kills, but it wasn't enough to deliver a win against the eighth-ranked Nittany Lions. It's all conference play from here on out, and the team will be on the road this week to play number four Wisconsin and Ohio State. The squad will be looking to see if they can pull off an upset against the ranked Badgers and get some more conference wins under their belt. Well, as the fall sports season continues on, Maryland's winter sports teams are going through their final tune-ups before their regular season begins. The men's basketball team held an open practice this past Sunday, and our Lauren Roche was there to take a look at how Mark Turgeon and the Terps are preparing for tip-off. Excitement is building here in College Park as basketball season is quickly approaching. For the Left Bench TV, I'm Lauren Roche here at the Xfinity Center, where the number seven ranked Terps held an open practice. Fans filled the stadium to watch their favorite team practice this Sunday. After introductions and a few words from senior Anthony Cowan, the scrimmage began. Freshman Makai Mitchell and returners Jalen Smith and Anthony Cowan made some big plays for their team. Following the scrimmage, there was a Q&A with the players. The team then dedicated some time to meeting their fans, taking photos with them, and signing autographs. The day was all about Maryland pride and getting excited for the basketball season. For us, whenever you can get a team in front of people, it helps. And uh, so we'll be better Friday when we play the exhibition game because of what we did today. And last year we had an open practice for the students, I think. Um, and so that was kind of, you know, just getting us in front of people. So that was a good day. That was a good turnout. Maryland starts their season at home on November 5th against Holy Cross. For the Left Bench TV, I'm Lauren Roche. Thanks for watching.
Before that opening game against Holy Cross, the men's team will play a preseason exhibition against Fayetteville State this Friday at the Xfinity Center. Be sure to follow the left bench for the coverage. The women's basketball team is said to have an explosive season as well. Just last week, the team was showered in preseason honors. To name a few, senior Kyla Charles was named Big Ten Preseason Player of the Year, and the team was chosen as this season's Big Ten favorite. Our Connor Luff was there to get the coverage on how they're pre preparing for the season. Basketball is close to its long-awaited return here in College Park, but we're getting a little sneak peek this week as both men's and women's teams are taking the court in exhibition play. For the Left Bench TV, I'm Connor Left here at the Xfinity Center, where the women's Terrapins took on California University of Pennsylvania and displayed their talent on both sides of the basketball. The Maryland women's basketball team comes into the season ranked fifth in the preseason rankings after a 29-win season and Big Ten championship. The team returns all of its starting lineup with the addition of five-star point guard Ashley Owusu, adding to an already potent Maryland offensive attack with seniors Kyla Charles and Stephanie Jones leading the group. Things didn't look that way to start in their exhibition against California University of Pennsylvania, but after holding just a six-point lead to enter the half, they exited with a 38.1, led by sophomore Shakira Austin's post play and Taylor Mike Sell's barrage of three-pointers. Their 109-65 victory displayed everything that Coach Freese is excited about for this upcoming season. I think the thing you'll see with our team, uh, first and foremost, is our size. Uh, we have tremendous length, uh, both on the perimeter, point guard position, wings, uh, inside. You're going to see that size. The, the, the talent level has really increased. We have depth at every single position. Now, of course, this Maryland team is led by their star player, Kyla Charles coming off a season in which he scored 17 points a game and earned a first team all Big Ten selection. Charles was named preseason Big Ten Player of the Year and will hope to lead the Terrapins through a tough early season schedule. Our schedule uh, is going to have us battle tested early, love our non-conference to be able to see uh, where we're at. Obviously the second game of the season, you know, uh, having South Carolina come to our place November 10th, uh, 3 o'clock p.m. Uh, immediately we'll, we'll have an idea of where we're at. The women's basketball team will officially kick its season off November 5th against Wagner here in College Park. For the Left Bench TV, I'm Connor Left. Thanks for watching the Left Bench Overtime. It's been an exciting week for the team conference-wise, but this week the Terps gears will shift as they look to see where they rank nationally when the AP Top 25 is released this Wednesday. Even though the Maryland wrestling team has a new head coach in Alex Clemson, he is making sure that the program's traditions continue on. And that started this past weekend when the team hosted the annual Red Black Wrestle-Offs at the Pavilion. TLB-TV's Tino Qualiata has more on the scrimmage and how the Terps look going into a new year. Maryland Wrestling held their annual Red vs. Black Wrestle-Offs today to kick off the 2019-2020 campaign. Last year, the Terps finished the season at 2-12, but some key returnees from last year's squad are Brandon Cray at 125 pounds, Kyle Jasensky at 184 pounds, and Phillips Badafra at 165 pounds. Maryland lost Yusuf Hamida, one of the best wrestlers in program history, to graduation. Helping them on their quest will be first-year head coach Alex Clemson. Clemson spent the past five years at Missouri, serving as an associate head coach the past four. While at Missouri, Coach Clemson helped the Tigers to an 84-7 combined record with five straight top 16 finishes in the NCAA championships. I thought we had good action. I thought we had really good effort. Um, even from the guys that were on the short end of the stick, nobody was hanging their head. Nobody was moping. Um, there was good fight up and down the lineup from opening whistle to closing whistle. I think we're really strategic about uh, our practice planning. I think um, we're running shorter practices. Um, that are a little higher intensity. I think the biggest challenge for me is, is probably holding my staff accountable. Um, you know, I've always been the one being mentored and being, you know, directed. And so that's not something that I necessarily like to do. I'm really tight with my staff. The Terps will travel to Charlottesville, Virginia to take on the Virginia Cavaliers on Saturday, November 2nd. For all your wrestling coverage, stay tuned to the Left Bench TV. I'm Tino Qualiata, and thanks for watching. The team will start their 2019-2020 slate at the Cavalier Duels in Charlottesville, Virginia this Saturday. Maryland fans, get your calendars ready. The gymnastics team released their schedule for the 2020 season, and the Terps are looking to make it to their third NCAA Regionals in a row. 
The Gym Turfs will kick things off at the annual Red Black Meet at the Xfinity Center on December 6th. But starting in January, it's all business for the Terps. Their Big Ten slate includes home meets against Iowa, Illinois, and Rutgers. Maryland will also be traveling to Columbus, Ohio for the Big Five meet at Elevate the Stage, a premier invitational and new territory for the team. The Gym Terps will host the Terrapin Invitational, the Maryland Five, and attend several other multi-team meets throughout the winter. The chance for postseason play starts at the end of March, when the squad will see if they can make their way to the Big Ten Championships. Well, you know, Katie, the gymnastics team, that schedule really sets them up for some good stuff. What can we see from them this year? Definitely something to look out for is junior Audrey Barber. She made a standout role last year in every single meet, and she's definitely someone that people are going to look forward to seeing this year. And all those flips a lot of times land the gymnastics team in our show, part of our top five plays of the week. And let's take a look at this week's top five right now. And to start us off, let's head to the Xfinity Center in the open practice last week. Terps held a scrimmage. Anthony Cowan finds Jalen Smith for this sweet alley-oop. Coming in at number four, Taylor Mikesell runs one down the court to get two for the Terps. Mikesell, the reigning Big Ten freshman of the year, looking really good as we get another look at this layup. Then for number three, we'll head to the football field. The Terps did drop this game to Indiana, but Javon Leak with another awesome run. That one adding another six points for the Terps. And at number two, senior Madison McGuire shoots one in the net on senior day to help land her hat trick for the game. McGuire been so good this year for Maryland as they look to get another Big Ten crown in the Big Ten tournament. And our number one play of the week, we will head over to the pitch at Ludwig Field. And it's another senior, this time Captain Johannes Bergman, netting in the game winner in overtime against Yale, leading his team to victory. What a week for Johannes Bergman. And with that performance, he is our Terp of the week. Bergman scored his first career collegiate goal against Big Ten rival Indiana with an impressive header a couple days before this when he netted the game winner against Yale in an awesome matchup. Bergman has been such a big part of the Terps over the past couple of years. Been pretty much their center back this year, but transitioning forward and scoring a couple of goals in recent weeks. And now for Pro Terps, it's official. Bruno Fernando has made history as the first Angolan to play in the NBA. The former Maryland big man made his debut against the Pistons Thursday night, scoring seven points and grabbing three rebounds in just 14 minutes off the bench. You might have had some flashbacks to the Xfinity Center in that game, as Bruno made a three-pointer off of a pass from none other than fellow Terp Kevin Herter. I gotta say, watching Herter pass to Bruno saw it so many times here at Maryland, even more fun to watch it in the NBA. The future really bright for those guys and a big future coming up for Maryland sports teams. And we welcome in Rachel Hersheimer now. Rachel, what does Maryland have going on this week across every sport? A lot of things. Well, guys, with homecoming weekend just days away, there's about to be much needed energy set to hit College Park, and I predict that will boost the momentum for Maryland athletics. Well, let's check out what's on tap for this week. Tuesday night, the Maryland men's soccer team will be on the road in Happy Valley, taking on the Nittany Lions, and will be home against the Wolverines Sunday at 3. Next up, we have the Maryland volleyball team. They're scheduled to play the Badgers in Wisconsin on Wednesday. You can catch that matchup on the Big Ten Network, and on Saturday, they're playing the Ohio State in Columbus. Sad that the Maryland field hockey team has an away game this weekend? Well, don't be. They're just a Metro ride away on Tuesday against American University. Hop on the yellow line and go cheer them on. And at home, Saturday at noon, the Maryland football team set to play the Michigan Wolverines. Guys, I was in the big house this weekend to witness Michigan's best game of the season against the Fighting Irish. It poured the entire game. So if Michigan can crush a team like Notre Dame in those conditions, I think Maryland really needs to buckle down. It's going to be a tough matchup. Yeah, guys, it'll definitely be interesting to see how things are going to play out against Michigan this Saturday. Now that we've seen Josh Jackson, Piggy, and Tyler Dessou all play in the same game, it'll be interesting to see who Lox is going to put up first. And it's homecoming in College Park. They're wearing the throwback jerseys. Could spell a big upset coming up. That is all for this edition of the Left Bench TV. Thanks for watching. I'm Zach Sola. And I'm Katie Marr. Be sure to keep up with all of our coverage on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at The Left Bench. We'll see you next time.